Today we're painting Egyptian's crocodile god Sobek. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good day. I'm back with another god from Ankh, Gods of Egypt, the board game, and this guy is primed in desert yellow. Why? Because originally the miniature was actually green, which is kind of funny because this miniature has a lot of green to it. Well, his skin anyways. So what I'm starting off with is actually something different. We're doing some military shader on all his nice scaly green skin. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have that desert yellow stay in the background kind of thing. And this is going to be sort of like a highlight area. No, it's not the only thing I'm going to be doing to this skin. Stay tuned to find out. Hey, and if you're enjoying these videos, please drop a like. And I also notice only about 75% of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So please hit that subscribe button and support the channel. It would be much appreciated. All right, moving on to some skeleton bone now from the army band. We're going to be doing his teeth, his nice, sharp, jagged teeth. And we're also going to be doing a dry brush of the skeleton bone on uh, the underneath part of his skin. Kind of like where... Uh, it's more like like a softer area of the skin, so like underneath his jaw, and just a bit on the front chest, under the arms. Uh, and I used a brush that I should maybe not have used. I usually sometimes use it for dry brushing, but this one seemed to have kept a little too much paint on it. But it still does a good job anyways, and I do the inside of the mouth and all that. I don't know why I did the inside of the mouth, because I was going to be painting it anyways later on. So, uh, yeah, a little dry brush on there, and you can see, you can still see some of that desert yellow, you can still see some of that military shader, and now we're doing this, like, really light pale green paint called Scaly Hide, uh, we're going to doing this on the top part of the scales of Sobek, uh, just so, again, we just hit the raised edges, we want to keep the desert yellow in the background as well as that military shader. Alright, now we're moving on to those, like, feather or I don't even know what you want to call these things on the headdress anyways we're using some elemental bolt uh, beautiful turquoise color by the way uh, you want to load up your brush not too too much and pretty much just as you're painting it bring it downwards and you're gonna maybe miss some of the little nooks and crannies but you can just go back quickly pass it over sideways so that you don't miss any of those and you don't see any more of the desert yellow all right, we're using a little bit of Bay Blonde now. This is a, a yellow color. We're using it on the eyes. I dabbed a little black in there after as well, just to really make those crocodile eyes pop. A little bit of scar tissue now for the mouth, so his tongue, the roof of the mouth, and the, the back of the mouth. Uh, and it was kind of funny, is I actually forgot to put a wash on his mouth later on. So, But it still turns out looking actually pretty nice, not too pink anyways. It, it kind of gives it a little bit more oomph. Anyways, now we're going to be doing that big robe of his with some Void Shield Blue, another paint from Army Painter. As you notice, this is going to be painted entirely in Army Painter paints. Uh, this Void Shield Blue, uh, you're going to need to do a second layer of it, which is perfectly fine. You don't want your paint to be too thick when you're applying this, because if it is, you're going to lose a lot of the details. But on a robe like this, even if it was thick, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, because you're... You, I mean, there's not many details. Like, I mean, there's a big flaps and stuff like that, so... The more areas, like this little area in front of his chest is where there's more details and you might not want to slather on like a, a bowl full of paint. Next we're going to be using some Ethereal Spectre. Uh, this is a D&D unique color from Army Painter and it's like a light purple pink tone to it. Uh, it's going to be going on like that big feather or this like, I don't even know what that is either. There's, I should maybe look into what these headdress pieces are. Leather Brown is next folks and we're going to be using that on that one little strap he has holding up his robe. <laughs> Wouldn't want that to fall off now, would we? Uh, <laughs> Alright, that again, leather brown, beautiful color as well, nice and... All the paint, army painter paints are great. Oh, we're bringing out that greedy gold, folks. Is, have you missed it? I sure haven't. Uh, anyways, it's still a beautiful color from the army painter. Uh, with the desert yellow, I find it was actually going on better. Uh, I don't know if it's just the desert yellow because it's got a yellowish tone to it that the gold was working a little bit better uh, and applying itself better, but it just turns out really nice and still has a nice shine to it as well. So there's a lot of parts, well actually not as much on this miniature, there's a lot of big parts that have gold on them. So this whatever thing he's holding, weird looking sword uh, with a crocodile imagery on it. Uh, and I tried looking up the Sobek, but it was an Egyptian god, and it pretty much just says he's like the crocodile god. It was to include 
the live sacred crocodile. Also, he it looks like um, it was his Petsuchos, which I've painted him on the channel. All right, blue tone on the dress or the robe, I should say, uh, because I, I like to use blue tone on light blue uh, paints because it really makes that color pop. And when it dries, it has like that shadow effect in all the, the creases. Uh, and then I'm also gonna dry brush that on another color just above it, uh, just to make those little uh, raised areas pop a bit more. But again, blue tone, I mean, you could have used just a regular dark tone on this. I wouldn't use a brown on the blue, that's for sure. Nothing like a strong tone or a light tone or mid-brown. Now we're gonna use purple tone on that Ethereal Spectre part that we did a while ago, just again to give those uh, that area a nice little uh, popping effect, I guess. Dark tone now for all the gold. Uh, and this is where I was supposed to put it on the tongue as well, and I completely forgot. Uh, but I might, I might do it later on and just add it on, not a big deal. So anywhere where it was gold as well as that feather-like thing at the back here or whatever that thing is. Uh, now see this is where I dry brush them, Ice Storm. This is a very, very light blue. Just slowly grabbing those raised edges. You don't want to push the brush on your miniature so that you don't hit everywhere else. And it's just going to give that nice finishing touch on there. Now we're prepping some areas with some shining silver. Now I really wanted a bright silver color for these areas because we're going to be doing some speed painting after. We're going to be using some speed paint on this guys folks. Speed paint, amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, this is from the Iron Painter coming up. So yeah, we're going to do a few of the parts on this like some of the jewelry, some of the areas where it was supposed to be like uh, red or blue metallics. So instead we're going to use spa uh, the speed paint to do those metallic effects. Uh, so coming up first, we're going to be using some High Lord Blue. And look at that. I mean, I don't know if you can really tell, but the shine is still there. That shining silver just comes right through. I don't even think contrast paints did such a good job with metallic. I think speed paint does a better job with metallics. Uh, now we're using Slaughter Red. <laughs> their colors, their, their names on these are sometimes kind of interesting. It's like Slaughter Red, really? Anyways, uh, so some of the other jewelry parts, a nice thing on top of his head uh, and on his sword. And again, you can see that shine. Now, the one on top of his head kind of got dull at one point. I don't know why did that. He could have put a gloss varnish. Anyways, there you go, folks. Sobek is painted, ready for the table. I hope you enjoyed these videos, guys. I did a little bit of basing here. I put some water effects on the bottom to make it look like he's walking on the Nile, I guess. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. And we'll catch you all in the next one.